Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel called Statistics from A to Z Confusing Concepts Clarified. These videos are based on content from my book of the same name, which is published by Wiley. For more information on the book and these videos, please visit statisticsfromatoz.com. This is the third video I'm making on errors in statistics. Earlier, I had done one on residuals, which are a type of error that we find in regression analysis, and I had done another video on standard error, which is the standard deviation of a test statistic. It's a very confusing concept, which my video clarifies. And after this video, I'll do one on alpha and beta errors, and then one on margin of error. See statistics from a to z.com slash videos for the latest status of my videos completed and planned. As usual in the book and in these videos, we'll start by going quickly through a list of keys to understanding, or KTUs. This will give you the overall picture of the concept on a single page. After that, we'll go into a detailed explanation of each of the keys. For this video, there are five KTUs. Here is the first key to understanding. Errors in statistics can be classified into two kinds experimental errors, in which someone or something did something wrong, and sampling errors, in which a statistical estimate from a sample is not identical to the property of the population or process which it estimates. KTU number two says, experimental errors largely involve errors in collecting the data, measurement errors, and sampling bias. Key number three says, sampling errors include alpha, errors and beta errors, margin of error, regression residuals, and sum of squares error. Key to understanding number four says, some types of sampling errors influence each other. Key to understanding number five says, an increase in sample size reduces sampling errors. And here, on one page, are all five keys to understanding the types, uses, and interrelationships of, standard, of statistical errors. You may wish to pause the video at this point and read them all together. Okay, let's now, let's now take a closer look at each key to understanding. Number one, KTU number one says errors in statistics can be classified into two kinds, experimental errors and sampling errors. Experimental errors are due to a, mis a mistake that has been made. This is usually in the collection of data. One kind of experimental error is called sampling bias. In sampling bias, the error is, not, is in not collecting a sample which is random. A second kind of experimental error is measurement error. Both of these types of experimental errors are covered in more detail under KTU number two. The second kind of error in statistics is called sampling error, also known as random error or stochastic error. These are not really errors. No one did anything wrong. It's just that if, for example, we calculate the mean of a sample, it's not as accurate a picture of the entire population or process as calculating the mean of the entire population or process. Key number two says experimental errors largely involve errors in collecting the data, measurement errors, and sampling bias. Measurement error is also known as systematic error or observational error. In the quality improvement discipline known as Six Sigma, there is an entire subdiscipline called Measurement Systems Analysis, or MSA, which is devoted to the subject. Lack of repeatability and reproducibility are two major types of measurement errors examined in MSA, Measurement Systems Analysis. If the measuring is done with a measuring device, the device could be faulty, or the person doing the measuring could simply make a mistake. Also, different inspectors may make different judgment calls on borderline cases. 
If the measurement is not repeatable or reproducible, it could be erroneous. The second type of experimental error is sampling bias, in which a non-random sample, non sample was collected. For example, with a phone survey, which is done during the day, many people who are called may be at work, or some people won't answer if they don't know the calling number. People who are lonely or who are less busy tend to answer the phone more and stay on the phone to complete a survey. Then there is location bias. If you simply survey people on a college campus, the demographics will be skewed to people aged 20, 18 to 22. In inspection bias, it has been found that visual inspectors of items tend to select for their sample those items which have an obvious defect. Sampling errors are the most statistical of errors in statistics, and we'll devote most of this article to them. In fact, much of inferential statistics is devoted to quantifying and studying these calculated differences between a sample statistic and the corresponding population or process parameter. There will be a separate video devoted to alpha errors and beta errors, so we won't go into detail here. But briefly, an alpha error, also known as a type 1 error, is the error of falsely concluding that there is a difference, change, or effect when in fact there is not. That is, it is the error of rejecting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is true. An alpha error is also known as a false positive. P, the p-value, is the property, probability of an alpha error. Alpha A is the number we select. It is the maximum value of P that we will accept in an inferential statistical analysis, such as a t-test or ANOVA. A beta error is the opposite of an alpha error. It is the error of falsely concluding that there is not a difference change or effect when in fact there is. That is, it is the error of failing to reject the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is false. A beta error is also known as a false negative. Again, the next video I do will be on alpha and beta errors. It may have been completed by the time you see this. The margin of error, MOE, is half the width of a two-sided confidence interval. For example, you may have heard something like this on the radio or TV. With a 95% level of confidence and a margin of error of plus or minus 2%, we predict that candidate A will get 54% of the vote. The plus or minus 2% is called the margin of error. For a more in-depth treatment of this concept, see the video margin of error, which I intend to work on after the alpha and beta errors video, or you can read the book. In a regression model, for any value of the ind independent variable x, the residual is the difference between the value of the dependent variable y, which is predicted by the model, and the actual value of y in the data. In this illustration, the length of the vertical dotted line to each point is the value of the residual for that point. It's the difference between the point and the regression line. The discipline of design of experiments, I have some videos to come on that, can help refine a regression model and reduce the size of the residuals. I had earlier done a, a video on residuals, which is part of a playlist on regression. Standard error is defined at the, as the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. I have completed videos on all three of these concepts standard deviation, sampling distribution, and standard error. To understand the definition I just gave you, you need to understand the concept of sampling distribution. Standard error is an arcane concept which, which most of us find hard to comprehend. Here's a conceptual diagram that I designed to help illustrate the concept. It is explained in the video on sampling distribution. The standard error is frequently found as the denominator in inferential statistical formulas. Key to understanding number four says, 
some types of sampling errors influence each other. For example, in inferential statistics, in inferential statistical tests, we need to select a value for alpha. Alpha is the maximum probability of an alpha error, that is, of a false positive, which we are willing to accept. Alpha equals 0.05 or 5% is the most common selection. But one might ask, why not make it 1% or something smaller? The reason is that the probability of an alpha error, uh, uh, probability of alpha errors and beta errors affect each other inversely. That is, if one goes down, the other goes up. If you want to reduce the probability of a false positive alpha in your conclusions and you select a very small value for alpha, you pay a price in the form of an increased probability of beta error, false negative. The video Alpha and Beta Errors has more on this. The critical value of a test statistic, and a test statistic is, are things like z, t, f, or chi square, is in the numerator of the formula for a margin of error. So larger values for the critical value will result in a larger MOE. But for any given distribution, the critical value is dependent entirely on the value of alpha. A larger value, value for alpha results in a smaller critical value, and a smaller critical value is closer to the center of the distribution. So a larger value for alpha results in a smaller margin of error. On the left, we have selected alpha equals 30%, an unusually large value for alpha. This results in a comparatively narrow value for MOE, the margin of error. On the right, we show the more common selection of alpha equals 5%, and you can see that the margin of error is considerably wider. As we've shown, there are trade-offs between different types of sampling errors. However, there is a way for us to have our cake and eat it too. Increasing sample size is like a universal cure. Increase the sample size n, and you decrease the probability of a sampling error. For more, see the two videos on sample size. Here we show that the sample size n, that as the sample size n goes up, both alpha error and the margin of error go down. This makes sense because a larger sample size would more accurately represent the entire population or process. And that's it for the overall concept of statistical errors, which is the third video in this list. Previously, I uploaded videos on residuals and standard errors. Coming next are two videos, alpha and beta errors and margin of error. If you liked this video, please remember to press the thumbs up like button on your screen below. I'll be making more videos of some or most of the 60 plus concepts in the book if folks like you tell me more videos are wanted. Please subscribe to this channel to be notified when new videos are uploaded. Also, the website statisticsfromazz.com has a listing of available and planned videos. Now, videos like this one can be very helpful, but they're not very handy when you want to quickly look up something on the job while studying or during an open book exam. For that, nothing beats a book or an ebook. You can also learn more about those on the website. I'd recommend following my blog at statisticsfromazz.com slash blog. I've got some things there that hopefully you will find interesting, like a statistics tip, as well as posts showing that you are not alone if you're confused by statistics. I'll also be posting on the Facebook page, Statistics from A to Z, and on Twitter as at, stata, at stats A to Z.